Okay, one more subspace example. We've done kind of a nice sequence of them. This is subspace example number six. We're going to be working with a set of vectors that will denote u again. And every vector in the set u has this form. It's a length three vector. The first coordinate is 2s minus r. The second coordinate is 2r. And the last coordinate is 4s plus 3r for all values of r and s in the reals. So for any values of r and s that you can come up with, plug them into this, and that is an element of u. And the set u consists of all possible combinations of values r and s in the reals to form this length 3 vector. What we're going to do is we're going to show that u is a subspace of r3. So r3 is the set of all um, real valued vectors of length 3. So we're going to show that u is a subspace of it by finding two vectors that will denote x and y, and we're going to show that u can be written as the span of x and y. And really what this is, this, uh, this is us applying a very general theorem. The general theorem says if you're working with some vector space, and if you choose some arbitrary elements from that vector space, the span of those vectors is a subspace. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to find these vectors x and y. Vectors x and y will be elements of R3. We're going to write u as the span of x and y. And then by this general theorem, which we'll state at the end, by definition, u is a subspace of R3. So first, let's go ahead and find what are these vectors x and y. So first, let's go ahead and just write down the general form of the vectors that are in U. And note one thing, I can actually factor this into kind of two pieces. I can write it as kind of an S part and an R part. So if I split it up into this vector, which contains only S's, and this vector, which contains only R's, I can split it up like that. And then I can even factor out the S. I can write S times the vector 2, 0, 4. And I can factor out the R. I can write it as R times a negative 1, 2, 3. I can think of this as s times the vector x, so let's define this to be the vector x, and similarly let's define this to be the vector y, and now what I've done is I've written the arbitrary element in the vector u that I started with as basically a linear combination of the vectors x and y. So this is just another way of writing the elements of u. But writing it in this way is interesting because I can see that the set U consists of all linear combinations of X and Y, which really is the span of X and Y, right? All linear combinations of some set of vectors by definition is the span. What I have circled right here is by definition all linear combinations of X and Y because S and R are very arbitrary numbers from the reals. So this set of vectors U is really the span of x and y. So I've been able to write u as the span of these two vectors x and y like I wanted. Because of that, since x and y are in R3, and because I've been able to write u as the span of x and y, then u by definition is a subspace of R3. And really what we're doing here is we're applying this very general theorem. So let's go ahead and state what this general theorem is. It basically says if you're working with a vector space v, and if you choose some arbitrary elements from it, so we'll denote those vectors v1, v2, up to vn, so pick some vectors from v, then the span of those vectors that you selected is by definition a subspace of v. So that's what we had in our problem. We were working with R3. In our case, v was R3. We found two vectors, x and y. x and y were in v, or in the specific example, we worked R3. And then we were able to write u as the span of x and y. So by this general theorem, by definition, u is a subspace of R3.